selections from the dhammapada translated from the pali with introductory essays and notes priyadasi mahathera vajirarama kalambu sri lanka the buddha over 2500 years ago they are lived in northern india a religious teacher who had attained supreme enlightenment and security from bondage through moral intellectual and spiritual perfection a teacher with an indefatigable zeal and steel determination for propagating the truth he had realized that dynamic personality is none other than siddhartha gautama siddhartha gautama in sanskrit popularly known as the buddha his father sudrodhana ruled over the land of the sakyas at kapilavastu on the nepalese frontier mahamaya the princess of the kolias was sudodhana's queen at the early age of 16 the prince was married to a beautiful princess named Yasodhara lacking nothing of the earthly joys of life he lived amidst song and dance in luxury and pleasure however with the advance of maturity the prince began to glimpse the woes and miseries of life despite the father's endeavors to keep them out of the sight of the sons inquiring eyes such attempts only heightened the sons eagerness to understand the meaning of sorrow and to find a way out of it for the benefit of suffering mankind the more he came in contact with the world outside his palace walls the more convinced he became that the world was lacking in true happiness and that what appeared to be happiness was distinctly temporary and unstable and its disappearance became a cause for further unhappiness now at the age of 29 when yasodhara gave birth to his only son rahul the prince left the palace renouncing wife child father his mother had already passed away and a crown that held the promise of power and glory and in the guise of an indigent ascetic retreated into the solitude of the forest there to seek an answer to the riddle of life and to obtain enlightenment dedicating himself to the noble task of discovering a remedy for life's universal ill 
he began a determined struggle to subdue his body in the hope that his mind set free from the shackles of the body might be able to soar to the heights of liberation at the end of 6 years self mortification he realized the futility of such an endeavor he also realized that the path to the fruition of his ardent longing lies in the direction of a search inward into his own mind this led to a critical analysis of the function of the human mind which ultimately brought him a realization of the four fundamental principles pertaining to life which he called the four noble truths truth number 1 the fact of dukkha that is suffering or disharmony or conflict or unsatisfactoriness truth number 2 its cause truth number 3 its cessation and truth number 4 the way leading to its cessation thus siddhartha gautama by comprehending in all their fullness and profundity the import of the four noble truths became the buddha or the awakened one even after he became a buddha he did not claim to be any divine being a god or brahma who creates and sits in judgment over the destinies of mankind he is a man among men asked as to who he was the answer came i am one awake and summed up his attainments in these words i know what should be known what should be cultivated i have cultivated what should be abandoned that i have let go hence i am buddha the awakened one sutta nipata 558 his followers therefore do not pray to him do not expect rewards and punishments from him knowing as they do that rewards and punishments are consequences of one's own deeds and misdeeds they take refuge in him in the understanding that his life and teaching is a model to be followed and which if faithfully followed would lead them from lower to higher levels of mental life and finally to that bliss that results from the highest culmination of spiritual progress which is nibbana sanskrit nirvana without resting on his laurels the buddha came out of his solitude and beginning 
with his first sermon to the five ascetics his former friends still steeped in the fruits of rigorous extreme asceticism embarked on a long and tireless mission of a period of 45 years disseminating the message of the dhamma his teaching far and wide he made no distinction of caste color class or clan when he disseminated the dhamma men and women from different walks of life the rich and the poor the lowliest and the highest the literate and the illiterate brahmins and outcasts princes and paupers saints and criminals listened to him as he showed the path to peace and enlightenment what the buddha taught was not only for india not only for his time it is for all men for all time the path he had pointed out is open to all the buddha passed away at the age of 80 at kusinara in modern uttar pradesh in india with a final admonition to his followers subject to change and transiency are all component things work out your deliverance with diligence this in short is an account of who the buddha is and what he had done for the world at large the four noble truths is the priceless message that he gave unto suffering mankind for their guidance and to help them to be rid of the bondage of dukkha and to attain that absolute happiness that absolute reality nibbana these truths are not his creation he only discovered their existence we thus have in the buddha one who deserves our respect and reverence not only as a teacher but also as a pattern of noble self sacrificing and meditative life we would do well to follow if we wish to improve ourselves the dhammapada the verses presented here are from a book of the buddhist canonical writings called the dhammapada dhammapada is a compound word from the pali language in which the oldest and most authentic buddhist texts are written the word dhamma has several meanings so has the word pada this compound dhamma pada 
in this context could be rendered as the path of truth or as the words of truth it is hardly necessary to probe further the connotation of the word and it would quite suffice to call this book by its original title dhammapada it is famous for the collection of gems of thought which it offers to the reader in 423 verses in this publication there will appear only 200 verses selected out of the original 423 they have been selected as being verses which have a common human appeal and are considered sufficient for the benefit of those readers who have no time to go through the entirety of the 423 verses it is hoped however that the richness of the contents of these 200 verses will create in the reader an urge to have access to the full version and enjoy the reading of the remaining verses which are no less interesting and instructive as those appearing in this abridged version the dhammapada like other great books of the world has been translated into many languages eastern and western ancient and modern there are a number of translations in english however no apology is needed for bringing out another edition in english of this sacred book because its message is one that does not lose its luster with the lapse of time it is a book that is a glow with the light of perennial wisdom its pages sparkle with sayings the truth of which have stood the test of time here is found the authentic teaching of the buddha as it was proclaimed 25 centuries ago it partakes both of the ancientness of the past as well as of the modernity of the present age i have not sought in this translation to sacrifice sense for embellishment and therefore endeavored my best to keep as close as possible to the original wordings in the text today science is assailing the citadels of dogmatic religions and there is now an increasing number of critical minds that find it impossible to accept any longer the tenets of traditional religious beliefs the advances made in the scientific and technical spheres have been so phenomenal 
that the new generation of youth finds dogmatic religion stifling its thirst for spiritual knowledge science itself however is no alternative to or substitute for religion and does not claim or aim to be such science is not concerned with ethical and spiritual values yet without them science may well prove to be more a curse than a blessing to mankind we have seen the danger of science devoid of ethical elements in the havoc created by atom bombs and nuclear weapons nuclear tests are still going on as the late president dwight d eisenhower said quote science seems ready to confer upon us as its final gift the power to erase the human life from this planet unquote the material world with all its complexities and variations calls for so much consideration and investigation which cannot reach a satisfactory solution in the absence of a search into the into the inner life the traditional religions with their age old theories are not meeting the challenge of the new world that is emerging the new generation especially in the western world is searching for something new because the traditionally accepted dogmas and theories have failed to satisfy them the problems of youth find no solutions in the dogmatic creeds of hereditary religions the question of inner self the inner world remains unanswered the values placed on the material aspect of life are taken so much for granted that they seem so superficial to the searching mind the problems of the western world are basically psychological obviously material knowledge and scientific and technological know-how have not brought man the answers to world problems this type of knowledge has only led to the multiplication of problems we need a message of hope to love and wisdom those who are in search of such a lofty message will certainly find it in the ancient but ever last ever fresh verses of the dhammapada this priceless book is respected for its universality that is to say it deals with all the conditions and attitudes to which the human mind is subject both in regard to the highest flights to which it can ascend as well as to the lowest depths to which it can descend it will therefore appeal to every type of human beings irrespective of race or creed and must therefore strike a responsive chord in the heart of every person 
whatever his experience of life may be and whoever he may be there is yet another reason why the dhammapada is greatly respected when we look round and view the conditions of the present world we are struck by the sad thought that there is no proper unity among the peoples that inhibit this world in every department of life in every sphere of human activity there is conflict and jealousy there is nothing which can bind the hearts of one to another so powerfully and strongly as the inspiring words of the dhammapada here then is the universal lesson buddha taught all mankind the lesson of virtuous conduct that is sila that leads gradually to tranquility that is samadhi which step by step graduates into emancipating wisdom that is panya and culminates in deliverance that is vimukti which is nibbana so here the perplexed will find clarity the distraught solace and the disheartened hope and courage the dhammapada has exercised a deep and abiding influence on the course of human thought and therefore on the course of human conduct it has shaped the minds and fashioned the lives of men and women for centuries verily it is a timeless message in conclusion i would like to quote from the late venerable kasapatera one time dr clasius pereira of sri lanka quote if i were to name any book from the whole tripitaka as having been of most service to me i should without hesitation choose the dhammapada and it goes without saying that to me it is the best single book in all the wide world of literature for 40 years and more it has been my constant companion and never failing solace in every kind of misfortune and grief there is not a trouble that man is here to for which the lord over sorrow cannot point out cause and prescribe sure remedy one never turns in vain to these stanzas of incomparable beauty for advice for alleviation of life's manifold pains or for message of cheer and penetrating insight on court selections from the dhammapada verse number 1 all evil mental states have mind as their forerunner mind is their chief and they are mind made if one speaks or acts with a polluted mind then suffering follows one even as the wheel follows the hoof of the draught ox verse number 
all good mental states have mind as their forerunner mind is their chief and they are mind made if one speaks or acts with the pure mind then happiness follows one as one's shadow that never departs verse number 3 he abused me he beat me he defeated me he robbed me the hatred of those who harbor such thoughts is never appeased verse number 5 hatred is never appeased through hatred in this world by love alone does it appease this is an ancient law verse number 11 those who imagine the non essential as essential and the essential as non essential by reason of such wrong thinking never arrive at the essential that is nibbana the supreme security from bondage verse number 12 having known the essential as essential and the non essential as non essential they do arrive at the essential because of such right thinking verse number 15 here he grieves hereafter he grieves both here and there does the evil doer grieve he grieves he suffers seeing his own foul deeds verse number 16 here he rejoices hereafter he rejoices both here and there does the righteous man rejoice he rejoices exceedingly rejoices seeing his own pure deeds verse number 19 though he recites much the texts but being heedless acts not accordingly he like the cow herd that counts the cattle of others shares not the fruits of a recluse's life verse number 20 though he recites little of the texts but conduct himself according to the teaching the dhamma he abandoning lust hate and delusion persist of right understanding mind well freed clinging to nothing here or hereafter shares the fruit of a recluse's life verse number 21 diligence is the path to the deathless negligence is the path to death the diligent do not die the negligent are like unto the dead verse number 
having distinctly understood this difference the wise established in heedfulness and delighting in the realm of noble ones rejoice in heedfulness verse number 23 those wise ones who meditate and steadfastly persevere realize nibbana the supreme security from bondage verse number 24 whosoever is striving mindful pure in conduct discriminating self controlled rightly living and wide awake his fame steadily increases verse number 25 through effort diligence discipline and self control let the wise man make of himself an island that no flood can overwhelm verse number 26 fools men of inferior intelligence indulge in negligence the wise man guards diligence as a supreme treasure verse number 27 indulge not in negligence have no intimacy with sense pleasures the man who meditates with diligence indeed attains much happiness verse number 29 diligent among the negligent wide awake among the sleeping the wise one advances as a swift horse outstrips a decrepit hack verse number 33 the fickle unsteady mind so hard to guard so hard to control the wise man straightens as the fletcher the arrow verse number 34 like a fish jerked out of its watery abode and cast on land this mind quakes therefore the realm of mara passions should be abandoned verse number 35 good it is to control the mind which is difficult to control which is swift and apt to alight on whatever it pleases the controlled mind yields happiness verse number 38 he whose mind is unsteady he who knows not the sublime teaching he whose confidence wavers the wisdom of such a person does not attain fullness verse number 41 before long this body 
devoid of consciousness will lie discarded on the ground worthless as a log of wood verse number 42 whatever harm an enemy may do to an enemy of one who hates to one who is hated an ill directed mind can do one far greater harm verse number 43 what good neither mother no father no any other kinsman can do to a man a well directed mind does to him and thereby ennobles him verse number 47 the man who gathers only the flowers of sense pleasures whose mind is absorbed in sense objects death carries him away as a great flood a sleeping village verse number 50 not the faults of others nor what others have done or left undone but one's own deeds done and left undone should one consider verse number 51 as the flower beautiful and brilliant of hue but without fragrance even so fruitless is the well spoken word of one who does not practice it verse number 52 as the flower beautiful brilliant of hue and full of fragrance too even so fruitful is the well spoken word of one who does practice it verse number 53 as from a heap of flowers many a garland is made even so many a good deed should be done by one born as a human being verse number 57 mar the evil one the temper finds not the path of those who are perfect in virtue heedful in living and liberated from taints through perfect realization of the truths verse number 60 long is the night to him who is awake long is the league to the weary traveler and long is repeated existence sansara to the foolish who knows not the sublime teaching verse number 61 if a man goes in search of a friend and cannot find one who is better 
or equal. Let him resolutely pursue the solitary course of life. There can be no friendship with the fool. Verse number 62 I have sons. I have wealth. Thus, the fool fusses in his mind. But he himself is not his own. What of sons and wealth? Verse number 63 A fool, aware of his folly, is for that very reason a wise man. But the fool who deems himself wise is called a fool indeed. Verse number 64 Even if all his life a fool associates with a wise man, he will not understand the truth, Dhamma, even as the spoon does not understand the flavor of the soup. Verse number 65 Even for a moment, if a man of intelligence associates with a wise man, he quickly understands the truth as the tongue perceives the flavor of soup. Verse number 66 Fools Men of inferior intelligence behave as enemies unto themselves, doing ill deeds that produce bitter fruit. Verse number 67 That deed is not well done, which one repents when it is done, and the result of which one experiences lamenting with a tearful face. Verse number 68 Well done is that deed which one repents not when it is done, and the result of which one experiences with great delight and happy mind. Verse number 69 So long as an evil deed committed does not bear fruit, thus long does the fool think it as sweet as honey. But when the evil deed ripens, the fool comes to grief. Verse number 71 An evil deed committed does not immediately bear fruit, even as milk that curdles not at once. Like fire, covered by ashes, burns, so does the evil deed follows the fool, burning him. Verse number 76 If one sees a wise man who, like a revealer of treasure, points out faults and rebukes, 
one should associate with such a person. One will fare well and not ill in the company of such a person. Verse number 77 Let him, the wise man, advise and exhort and dissuade others from evil. Such a person is dear to the good, unpleasant to the wicked. Verse number 78 do not associate with evil friends. Do not keep company with mean men. Associate with good friends. Keep company with the best of men. Verse number 79. He who imbibes the nectar of the Dhamma, the truth, lives happily with a serene mind. The wise man ever delights in the Dhamma proclaimed by the noble saints. Verse number 80 Irrigators lead the water. Fletchers fashion the shaft. Carpenters carve the wood. The wise discipline themselves. Verse number 81 As a solid rock is not shaken by the wind, even so, the wise remain unshaken amidst blame and praise. Verse number 82 As a deep lake is limpid and calm, so do wise men become calm on hearing the Dhamma the teaching. Verse number 85 Few among men are they who cross to the further shore. The other folk only run up and down the bank on this side. Verse number 90 For him whose journey is over, who is sorrowless, fully free from everything, and has put an end to all bonds, there is no burning of the passions. Verse number 94 he whose senses are controlled like horses well under the control of the charioteer. He who is cleansed of pride and rid of passions, such a steadfast one, even the gods envy. Verse number 96 His mind is calm, calm is his word and deed, who is liberated through perfect knowledge, who is pacified and steadfast. Verse number 98 Delightful indeed is that place where the worthy ones, Arahants, dwell, whether in village or in forest, whether in glen 
o in blade verse number 99 delightful are the forests where world links find no pleasure there the passionless rejoice for they are no seekers of sense pleasures verse number 100 better than a thousand utterances better than a mere jumble of meaningless words is one sensible phrase on hearing which one is pacified verse number 103 though one conquers in battle thousand times thousand men yet he is the greatest conqueror who conquers himself verse number 104 105 better is it to conquer oneself than to conquer others neither a god nor a gandab demigod no mar no brahma can undo the victory of a person who is self mastered and ever conducts himself with restraint verse number 110 a single day's life of a person who is virtuous and meditative is better than a life of 100 years of a person who is immoral and uncontrolled verse number 112 a single day's life of a person who strives with firm endeavor is better than a life of 100 years of a person who is lazy and indolent verse number 116 make haste in doing good restrain your mind from evil for whosoever is slow in doing good delights in evil verse number 117 if a man commits evil let him not do it again and again let him not delight in it painful is the accumulation of evil verse number 118 if a man does good let him do it again and again let him take delight in it happy is the accumulation of good verse number 119 the evil doer sees good until his evil deed bears fruit but when the fruit does ripen then does he see its ill effects verse number 
think not lightly of evil, saying, It will not come to me. Even a water pot is filled by the falling of drops. Likewise, the fool gathering it little by little fills himself with evil. Verse number 122 Think not lightly of good, saying, It will not come to me. Even a water pot is filled by the falling of drops. In the same way, the wise man, gathering it little by little, fills himself with good. Verse number 123 Even as a merchant with a small caravan, but carrying much wealth, would avoid a dangerous road, and as a man who loves life, would avoid poison, so should one avoid evil. Verse number 125 Whosoever harms an innocent man, pure and faultless, upon that very fool that evil recoils like fine dust thrown against the wind. Verse number 127 Neither in the sky, nor in mid-ocean, nor by entering a cleft in the mountains is found a place where abiding himself one may escape from the consequences of one's evil deeds. Verse number 128 Neither in the sky, nor in mid-ocean, nor by entering a cleft in the mountains is found a place where abiding himself death will not overcome him. Verse number 130 All fear punishment, violence. Life is dear to all. Comparing oneself with others, one should neither kill nor pause to kill. Verse number 131 Whosoever seeking his own happiness torments with the cudgel those who desire happiness themselves shall not get happiness after death. Verse number 132 Whosoever seeking his own happiness does not torment with the cudgel. Beings that are fond of happiness shall find happiness hereafter. Verse number 133 Speak not harshly to anyone, for those accosted will retort. Painful is vindictive talk, and you may receive blows in exchange.
verse number 135 as the cow herd with a stick drives the cattle into the pasture ground so do aging and death drive the life span of beings to its end verse number 146 what laughter what joy when it is ever burning with passions enveloped in darkness would you not seek a light verse number 150 a citadel made of bones is this body plastered over with flesh and blood wherein are stored up aging and death pride and detraction verse number 152 the man of little learning grows like a bull his flesh grows but not his wisdom verse number 155 not having lived the noble life not having acquired wealth in their youth men pine away like old herons in a pond without fish verse number 158 let one establish oneself first in what is proper and then advise others such a wise man will not get defiled verse number 159 as he admonishes others so should he himself act himself well controlled he should have control over the others it is difficult indeed to control oneself verse number 160 one self is one's own protector refuge who else could the protector be with one self well controlled one obtains the protection which is difficult to obtain verse number 163 easy to do are things that are evil and harmful what is beneficial and good that indeed is very difficult to do verse number 165 by oneself is evil done and by oneself is one defiled by oneself is evil left undone and by oneself is one purified purity and impurity depend on oneself no one can purify another verse number 167 do not follow mean things do not live 
in heedlessness. Do not embrace false views. Do not be a world upholder by prolonging the cycle of existence and continuity. Sansara. Verse number 168. Rise up. Rouse yourself. Never be heedless. Follow the law of virtue. He who practices virtue lives happily in this world and in the next. Verse number 169 Follow the path of virtue. Do not follow the path of evil. He who practices virtue lives happily in this world and in the next. Verse number 171 Come, behold this world, how it resembles an ornamented royal chariot, and in which fools flounder. For the wise, however, there's no attachment to it. Verse number 173 whose evil deed is covered by the good deed done by him. He illumines this world like the moon set free from a cloud. Verse number 174 This world is blind. Only a few here can see clearly. A few go to a heavenly realm like birds freed from the net. Verse number 176 There is no evil that cannot be done by a lying person who has transgressed the one law of truthfulness and who is indifferent to a world beyond. Verse number 194 Happy is the birth of the Buddhas. Happy is the teaching of the sublime Dhamma. Happy is the unity of the Sangha. And happy is the austere life of the United. Verse number 197 Happily, indeed, we live without hate among the hateful. Among men who hate, let us live without hatred. Verse number 201 The victor creates enmity in the defeated. The defeated live in distress. The peaceful live happily, giving up both victory and defeat. Verse number 202 There is no fire like lust. There is no evil or crime like hate. There is nothing 
so painful as the aggregates this body and mind there is no happiness greater than peace nibbana verse number 203 hunger is the greatest ailment component things the aggregates are the most painful knowing this as it really is the wise realize nibbana the supreme bliss verse number 204 health is the highest gain contentment is the greatest wealth a trusted friend is the best kinsman nibbana is bliss supreme verse number 213 from affection arises grief from affection arises fear to him who is free from affection there is no grief when fear verse number 215 from lust arises grief from lust arises fear to him who is free from lust there is no grief when fear verse number 216 from craving arises grief from craving arises fear to him who is free from craving there is no grief when fear verse number 217 who so ever is perfect in virtue and insight is established in the dhamma speaks the truth and fulfills his own duties him do people hold dear verse number 222 he who holds back the anger arisen in him as one checks a whirling chariot him do i call a charioteer other folk merely hold the reins verse number 223 conquer the angry man by love conquer the ill-natured man by goodness conquer the miser with generosity conquer the liar with truth verse number 224 one should speak the truth and not yield to anger when asked one should give though they are be little by these three things one may go to the presence of the devas the gods verse number 227 this is a thing of old atula not only of today they blame him who remains silent they blame him who talks much 
they blame him who speaks in moderation none in the world is left unblamed verse number 228 there never was there never will be nor is there now to be found anyone who is holy blamed or holy praised verse number 231 one should check bodily wrongs and be controlled in body giving up bodily wrongs one should be of good conduct in body verse number 232 one should check verbal wrongs and be controlled in speech giving up evil speech one should be of good conduct in speech verse number 233 one should check mental wrongs and be controlled in mind giving up evil thought one should be of good conduct in mind verse number 234 the wise are controlled in deed they are controlled in words and in thoughts verily they are well controlled verse number 239 gradually little by little from moment to moment the wise man removes his own impurities as a smith removes the dross of silver verse number 240 as rust arisen out of iron eats itself away even so do his own deeds lead the transgressor to a state of woe verse number 244 easy is the life of a man who is shameless who with the boldness of a crow is backbiting forward arrogant and impure verse number 245 hard is the life of a modest man who always seeks purity who is detached humble whose living is clean and reflective verse number 246 247 who so destroys life utters lies takes what is not given resorts to others wives and is addicted to intoxicating liquor he in this very life would dig up his own root his own happiness verse number 248 know thus o good man 
not easy of control are evil things let not greed and hate drag you to suffering for a long period verse number 251 there is no fire like lust there is no grip like hate there is no net like delusion there is no stream like craving verse number 252 easily seen are the faults of others but one's own faults are hard to see like chef one we knows others faults but one's own one conceals as a crafty hunter hides himself verse number 256 257 He is not just who decides a case partially the wise man should investigate both right and wrong impartially he who guided by the law decides right and wrong impartially that wise man is verily one who is established in the law verse number 258 one does not become wise merely by speaking much one who is secure peaceful free from hate and fearless causes no fear he is called a wise man verse number 259 one does not become versed in the dhamma by speaking much Whosoever, having heard the Dhamma, does not neglect it, but realizes it, he indeed is versed in the Dhamma. Verse number 260 He is not a thera, an elder, merely because his head is grey ripe he is in age a man grown old in vain is he called verse number 261 he in whom there is truth righteousness non violence restraint and control that wise man who has put aside impurities is truly called a thera an elder verse number 262 not by mere spacious talk complexion and beauty does a man become of good disposition if he be jealous miserly and deceitful verse number 264 not by shaving his head does an undisciplined man who utters falsehood become a recluse 
how can he be a recluse who is full of longing and greed verse number 267 he who has transcended both merit good and demerit evil he who leads the noble pure life and lives with understanding in this world he indeed is called a bhikkhu verse number 268 269 by observing silence the foolish untaught man does not become a sage muni but the wise man who as if holding a pair of scales takes what is good and leaves out what is evil is indeed a sage for this reason he is a sage he who understands the world both within and without is called a sage verse number 269 He is not a noble man, a saint, Arya, if he harms living beings. He who cultivates loving kindness towards all beings is called a saint, Arya. Verse number 273 of paths the eightfold path is the best of truths the four words detachment nibbana is the best of mental states and of bipeds men the man of vision verse number 274 this alone is the path there is no other for the purification of insight follow this path and you will confound mara the power of evil verse number 275 following this path you shall make an end of suffering declared unto you is the path by me having learned the process of the removal of the of the arrow of lust verse number 276 you yourselves should strive the buddhas are but the pointers to the path those who enter the path and cultivate meditation free themselves from the bonds of mara the power of evil verse number 277 all conditioned things are impermanent anicca when one sees this in wisdom then one becomes bored with this unsatisfactoriness this is the path to purification
verse number 278 all conditioned things are subject to suffering dukkha when one sees this in wisdom then one becomes bored with this unsatisfactoriness this is the path to purification verse number 279 all conditioned things dhamma are without self anatta when one sees this in wisdom then one becomes bored with this unsatisfactoriness this is the path to purification verse number 280 who strives not when it is time to strive who though young and strong is indolent who is low in mind and thought and lazy that idler never finds the way to wisdom verse number 281 watchful of speech and well controlled in mind let him do no evil with the body let him purify these three ways of action and attain the path declared by the sages verse number 288 sons are of no protection no father no kinsmen for one who is seized by death there is no refuge in kinsmen verse number 320 as an elephant in the battlefield bears an arrow shot from the bow so shall i endure abusive speech aimed at me indeed most men are ill-natured verse number 326 formerly this mind wandered about where it liked wherever it willed as it pleased today with wisdom meditation i shall control it as a mahout controls an elephant in rut verse number 327 take delight in mindfulness mind your mind draw yourself out of the mire of passions as wood an elephant sunk in mud comes out of it verse number 328 if you find an intelligent friend who is fit for company who is of good conduct and prudent then live with him happily and mindfully overcoming all obstacles
verse number 329 if you do not find an intelligent friend who is fit for company who is of good conduct and sagacious then live alone like a king who has renounced his conquered country or like a matanga elephant roaming at will in the forest verse number 330 it is better to live alone there is no fellowship with a fool let one live alone committing no evil being carefree like a matang elephant roaming at will in the forest verse number 331 friends are desirable when a need has arisen happy is contentment with whatever there might be merit done is pleasant consoling when life's end is approaching happy is the giving up of all sufferings arahantship verse number 332 in this world happy it is to attend on the mother to attend on the father too is happy happy is it to attend on the recluses and happy is it too to attend on the noble ones the arahants verse number 333 happy is age long virtue happy is well established confidence happy is the acquisition of wisdom happy is abstinence from evil verse number 334 the craving of the heedless man grows like a maluwa all entangling creeper he runs hither and thither from one life to another like a monkey in the forest looking for fruit verse number 335 who so ever in this world is overcome by this base craving this clinging to sense objects his sorrows grow like binner grass after rain verse number 336 but whosoever in this world overcomes this base craving so hard to subdue his sorrows fall away from him like water drops from a lotus leaf 
verse number 338 as a tree cut down begins to grow up again if its roots remain uninjured and firm even so when the roots of craving remain undestroyed this suffering arises again and again verse number 343 man enmeshed in craving are terrified like a hare in a snare therefore let the bhikkhu who wishes his detachment abandon craving verse number 345 346 what is strong is not the shackle made of iron wood or hemp but that attachment to gems and ornaments that longing for wife and children is really the strong shackle so the wise say even this which binds beings down which is yielding yet hard to loosen the wise cut off and abandoning sense pleasures free from longing they renounce verse number 348 give up attachment to the past aggregates give up attachment to the future give up attachment to the present crossing to the further shore of becoming with mind released everywhere no more shalt thou come to birth and aging verse number 349 restraint of the eye is good restraint of the ear is good restraint of the nose is good restraint of the tongue is good verse number 361 restraint of the body is good restraint of speech is good restraint of the mind is good restraint everywhere that is in the eye ear etc is good the bhikkhu restrained everywhere is freed from all suffering verse number 362 he who is controlled in hand controlled in foot controlled in speech possessing the highest control of mind delighted within composed alone contented he is called a bhikkhu verse number 363 sweet is the speech of the bhikkhu who has tamed his tongue who speaks wisely who is not puffed up and who expounds the meaning of the text verse number 365 one should not 
despise what one had received and one should not envy the gains of others the bhikkhu who envies others does not attain mental calm verse number 368 the bhikkhu who abides in loving kindness who takes delight in the teaching of the buddha attains the happy heaven of peace nibbana which is the calming of conditioned things verse number 372 there is no concentration to him who is without wisdom there is no wisdom to him who does not concentrate in whom there is concentration and wisdom he indeed is near to nibbana verse number 373 to the bhikkhu who has entered an empty abode whose mind is calmed and who sees with insight the dhamma truth there comes supreme joy transcending that of men verse number 379 o bhikkhu do censure yourself do examine yourself self guarded and mindful o bhikkhu you will live happily verse number 380 one self is one's protector one self is one's refuge let one therefore take care of one self as a trader of horses would a good horse verse number 382 the monk who while still young applies himself to the teaching of the buddha illumines this world like the moon freed from a cloud verse number 387 the sun shines by day the moon shines by night in his armor shines the warrior king in meditation shines the brahman but all day and night the buddha shines in his splendor verse number 391 he who does no evil through body speech and mind he who is restrained in these three respects him i call a brahman verse number 410 he who has no longings in this world or 
in the next who is free from desires and released him i call a brahman verse number 412 who here in this world has transcended the ties of both good and evil who is sorrowless free from defilements and pure him i call a brahman verse number 413 who is free from blemish stainless like the moon who is pure absolutely serene and clear and who has destroyed the craving for becoming him i call a brahman verse number 420 he whose destiny neither gods nor demigods kandab no men do no he who has destroyed all defilements and is accomplished arahat him i call a brahman verse number 423 the sage who knows his former lives who perceives heaven and hell who has reached the end of births and attained to super knowledge who has completed his task by living the holy life him i call a brahman verse number 393 not by method here not by lineage not by birth does one become a brahman but in whom there is truth and righteousness he is pure he is the brahman verse number 394 What is the use of thy matted hair o fool what is the use of thy antelope skin garment within thee are full of passions but thou makest clean the outside verse number 401 who like water on a lotus leaf or like a mustard seed on the point of a needle does not cling to sense pleasures him i call a brahman verse number 403 he whose wisdom is deep he who does possess insight who is skilled in knowing the right path and the wrong who has attained the highest end arahat ship him i call a brahman
verse number 405 he who has laid aside the cudgel of violence towards beings feeble or strong he who neither kills nor causes to kill him i call a brahman verse number 406 he who is friendly among those who are hostile composed among those in weapons unattached among those who are attached to their own mind and body him i call a brahman verse number 407 whose lust and hatred pride and detraction have fallen off like a mustard seed from the point of a needle him i call a brahmana verse number 408 